LC <laughs> circuit. So we have a capacitor, we have a switch, and we have an inductor. Inductor, capacitor, switch, time t is less than zero. So the capacitor has to have a charge on it in this configuration in order for this to work. We have an LC circuit. Let's see. Um, so the charge initial cannot equal zero. In fact, what else do we know about the charge initial on the capacitor? We know about that. It can't equal zero. It must be equal to? Tim? Big Q. Say again? Big Q. Big Q. I agree with that, but I want to know one other minor thing about that, that charge. Right. It's going to be the Q maximum. It can't ever get bigger than that, right? So the charge initial is going to be equal to its maximum charge, which we can call big Q, which is going to be maximum charge. Uh, okay. <clears throat> At t equals zero, we close the switch. And our goal here is to figure out the charge as a function of time um, and the current as a function of time again. Where do we start? Goals figure out the chart. By the way, remind me, what general category is this, Winter? Simple harmonic motion. You already know this is in simple harmonic motion. We start with charge on the capacitor. There is zero energy in the inductor, so all the energy is in the capacitor. Then we're going to have the energy transferred into the inductor. Where is the energy stored in the capacitor class? Electric. electric field, where is it stored in the inductor? Magnetic. magnetic field, right? So it's going to be going back and forth between the electric field and the magnetic field of the capacitor and the inductor. Where do we start? Uh, we start with, actually, in order to figure out <coughs> the, the energy, or the um, charge and the current, believe it or not, we don't start with a loop in this particular case. Um, start with Energy. Start with a total energy. The total energy is going to be equal to the energy stored on the capacitor plus the energy stored on the inductor. What is the equation for the energy stored on the capacitor? Len. That is an equation. That's the electric potential difference across an inductor, not the the uh, charge, or sorry, the energy stored on a capacitor. Q squared over 2C. Q squared over 2C plus the energy stored in an inductor. Sarah Jane Jones. Uh, one half uh, inductive squared. Uh, sorry, say again. One half. Inductive squared. Or something else. <laughs> or something else. What is it, uh, Mr. Pete? The current is squared. So it's L times I squared, the inductance times the current squared. Okay, that's the equation for the total energy. What do we do with this equation? And never mind, I can't do that. So in order to get to there, uh, what we need to do is take the derivative of the whole thing. So we have the derivative of the, the energy as a function of time. So I'm going to take the derivative of this whole thing with respect to time. Q squared over 2C plus 1 half Li squared all with respect to time. Why? What do I gain by taking the derivative? Class, what is the derivative of the energy stored on this system as a function of time equal to? Zero. Zero, because it does not change. We have conservation of energy. So zero is equal to this derivative. Zero then is going to be equal to the derivative of the charge squared as a function of time. So we're going to have the charge it changes, so we have 2q over 2c um, <coughs> times dq dt, using the unchanged rule here. Plus, we're going to have um, 2 times 1 half L times i times di dt. The 2s cancel out, the halves cancel out. We get this. So we know 0 is equal to q over c. Well, we know dq dt is just the current. And we know di dt then is actually going to be the second derivative of um, charge as a function of time. So li times the second derivative of the charge as a function of time. So uh, everyone? I. 
Everyone brought cards to the party. Even or zero, we don't want everything to the party because uh, nothing which makes sense. Negative L, second derivative of charge as a function of time squared, is equal to Q over C. Therefore, the second derivative of charge as a function of time is equal to negative 1 over LC times Q. Why is that helpful? Zach? Ah, it's not the time constant. Oh, no, it's the. Period. Also, not the period. <laughs> Zero. The angular frequency. It's a symbol for the angular frequency. Uh, winter. Sorry, what? The W. The W. That's what I get. The W, Jacobs? Omega. Omega, the W. Angular frequency class is then equal to what in this particular case? Remember, it's 1 over the square root of LC because that is the, where the location of the angular frequency is squared. Uh, therefore, we have several things. We have charge as a function of time is going to be equal to the charge maximum uh, times the cosine of omega t plus v, where omega is 1 over the square root of LC. We can take the derivative of that to get the current. We can also, you can also say that that's equal to the angular frequency equal to 2 pi over the period, and therefore you can solve for the period. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, yeah. I look forward to seeing you two minutes before next time.